This video is the first part in how to do the construction of our clay shoes in Ceramics 1. And we are using the patterns that I previously showed in another video. We are shrinking the shoe size down a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, manageable in our plaster boxes. So you can see the size comparison there from the original to the shrunk down shoe. I am starting off by creating a base that is a little bit thicker for this particular shoe because this shoe does have a very thick sole that is going to be textured. Now in the case of this, I'm taking my sticks and I'm turning them up on edge so it's going to be thicker. And since I am going to be carving the texture in the sole, I'm not worried about it being this thick. Then I'm tracing the pattern that I have previously shrunk down on the copy machine. And I know that I'm going to have a bit of a heel there. So I'm kind of sculpting where I want the heel to be. And I am going to make it just a little bit more of a heel because the shoe that I'm using is a little bit thicker. So I'm using the scrap clay to add a little bit more height to it and I'm just trimming out the extra. This is not necessary for those of you that are doing things like gym shoes or an athletic type of shoe. This just has a significant heel on it. And then I'm scoring and slipping, trimming that so it looks appropriate. So that's more realistic to the uh, proportion of the shoe. Now I'm going to use my sticks, the yellow sticks, which are three eighths of an inch thick, and I'm going to trim out the other pattern pieces. So this is one of the two sides. And then I'm softening the edge with my sponge before I build. Now as I do build this, I'm just kind of laying them out there so I know which side is on which, which side of the shoe. I'm squirting down my scrap, by the way. And now I'm going to do the front and the back of the shoe, but this time I'm going to use a panel made of decorative coils. Now you remember from our coil exercise that we did, that if you twist the coil ends opposite, it helps to keep them round, periodically dampen the coil. And I want to make the coil about the same thickness as the side slabs, which again, they're 3 eighths of an inch thick, so I'm going for about pinky thick. Now, this is the toe portion. This is the toe pattern, I should say, of the shoe. And I'm just, I was kind of dry fitting them. Now I'm uh, sponging them. And I'm going to try to get that arch approximately correct. And I keep using my pattern to make sure it looks right. And again, dampening those coils with a sponge before I place them together because you want them to be stuck. Okay, now I can use that pattern to trim off the ends and I just need to add that extra little bit on where it didn't fit. It wasn't quite big enough on that top part. So I'm just going to trim that off and then I'm going to blend together the coils there. Now to make this a panel, I flipped it upside down and just like I made a panel before on the skill builder, I am smoothing together those coils, not pressing so hard that I'm damaging the coil on the outside. Now I'm cupping the end of it because that part, it gets cupped as it goes around the toe and that will be going onto the toe part. Now, attaching is very important that you attach it very securely. So I am scoring and slipping both surfaces. And then once I get it pretty well attached with the scoring and slipping, then I need to add a coil as a little extra support. I'm using a blending coil on the inside, noticing I am scoring and slipping the coil. I place that in there and then I'm going to use a tool to blend up into the side and down into the bottom. So that coil 
is going to be the anchoring coil that holds the toe part of that shoe uh, intact onto the sole. And I'm just taking a finger and blending it a little bit more. Now I do the toe first because it's harder to get that coil in there. So I want, I want to do that without the other sides in the way. And now I'm going to uh, slip and score as I attach the slab sides making sure that you have the correctly oriented side section. And again, scoring and slipping that edge, just like we did on the skill builder. And once I get that in there, then of course I have to blend. I have to blend where the slab meets the panel of coils. And you can also again put a coil down at the base. Now I'm going to do the heel panel and for this, I'm also going to do a panel of coils. And again, they're all about the same thickness as the panels that I made for the side. So it's like 3 eighths of an inch, the yellow sticks, as thick as a pinky. And here I'm just assembling this panel, again, using my pattern as reference, making sure that you wet down the coils as you are beginning to attach them because you want the coils to be stuck. And here again, I just keep using that pattern as reference to make sure that I'm getting it the right uh, shape and everything as the pattern. I'm adding one final coil to the bottom of it to kind of finish off this panel, trimming the ends. Um, I do have the little top edition, the tab of that. And then I'm going to be blending that with uh, my wooden tool to make sure it's really adhered scoring and slipping the bottom edge and attaching this one, inserting it in there. Every, all edges are scored and slipped where it's gonna to touch the other panels. And then again, just like on that skill builder, you want to blend all areas, all panels together where they are touching and connecting. So whether or not you've used coil designs or you've used slabs, they should be really, really well blended and well connected. Once I get to this point, normally I would put it in my damp box to stiffen up a little bit. Now I'm doing another one with all slabs and I'm making the sole thick. Again, you can see the thickness of the sole on this shoe. So I've stood my little sticks up on edge. That way it's a little bit thicker. And then I am ribbing the clay just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And then when I go to cut out the pattern, remember that this is my left shoe that I'm doing. So you need to make sure that the, the part that was the tape side of the pattern is downward. And um, I did not do that on the other shoe, which I'll, I'll show that at the end, that I kind of messed up on that. So, once I get away the excess cutaway, I'm going to then smooth it with a sponge on the exterior edge. And then I am going to add a heel just like I did before. And I'm just sculpting it a little bit because this is kind of a substantial heel on this shoe. Again, you wouldn't normally do this on a tennis or an athletic type of shoe. Scoring, slipping, putting together, and blending. Now I can set that aside and work on the panels. So for this, I'm purely doing slab panels. I'm not doing coil panels like I did on the previous shoe. I am using the yellow slab sticks, which will give me a slab that's 3 eighths of an inch thick. The 3 eighths is going to be about as thick as a pinky, which is a good consistency. Um, once you roll it, then you want to rib it. I'm adding a little water because my clay was a little bit cracked on the surface and I was trying to remove some surface cracking. Now I can lay out all of my patterns and I'll just trace them onto the clay and cut them out with the needle tool. Needle tool is a nice tool to cut that out because it doesn't uh, um, like gouge your paper, say like a knife does. And once I have all of these cut out, I'll remove all the extra clay. Remember that clay, I will just squirt down with a squirt bottle to keep it moist. 
And when I begin assembly, remember that you want to assemble the, sh the toe portion of the shoe first. So everything, of course, gets scored and slipped. But I'm going to start with the toe portion because as I cup that around and everything, I want to be able to get inside and make sure that I'm blending the interior seam. So I'm just dry fitting it first. So I make sure that it looks, looks correct. And then I'm going to slip. And I'm scoring again. I like to be really uh, aggressive with my scoring and slipping. And then for the interior blending, you can either just blend it if you can put a tool in there, or in this case, I'm adding a coil like I did before. So I add the coil, then I'm blending the coil down into the sole and up into the side. That will anchor that toe portion on so it should not crack or pull away. Once you get the toe section in there, then you want to go ahead and score and slip and start the assembly of all the remaining panels. Remember to keep the outside of the foot panels on the outside of the foot, the interior of the foot on the inside. Um, you don't want to reverse those. It might not fit together well. Remember that the tape of the patterns would be on the outside, so make sure your orientation is correct as you do this. And then again, everything is scored, slipped, and then once I assemble it, then I have to fully blend the interior of all of those panels of how they've come together, just like I would have done with the coils. You just want to make sure that the slab panels are also blended really, really well together. Now this is an entirely different shoe that has a tongue. If you have a tongue in a shoe, I usually tell kids to make it a little bit thinner and bigger because the tongue has to go behind those top panels. So remember the top panels need to curve around your foot and then the tongue will go underneath it. So you have to slip and score the top of the tongue and the underneath side of those side panels. And then you push it together and blend it really well. You could use one of those wooden tools to get in there and help to kind of push up the toe or help to blend it a little bit. And that will help to uh, really kind of press that down. And then lastly, the uh, I'm going to kind of tap the toe to get it to bend a little bit. True confessions here, I need to tell you a major error that I did with this shoe. When you look at this, it looks like it's a right shoe and a left shoe, but this is supposed to be the same shoe. So the I have inadvertently reversed the clay shoe. It should not be opposite, it should be the same as the original. My fault was when I did the sole, I inadvertently put the sole the wrong direction. Remember that the tape of the pattern is on the exterior, which on the sole would be the bottom. And instead I made it on the top. 